Roses are red. I'm wearing a hat. I've done this for 13 years and I ain't never seen nothing like that. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV at my hometown Coldwater, Michigan store with the 25 RBP North Trail. But I think this thing should be called the Are You Kidding Me? I, they took a compact couples camper, gave it a massive bathroom. You've got a heavy duty tongue groove plywood floor so you don't get soft spots, a big king bed up front here, um, a massive under bed basement storage space that dwarfs almost anything I've seen, frankly, even in a lot of fifth wheels. Uh, but. They blended together a compact living room with massive counter space and a, and, a, and a dining arrangement like a fifth wheel toy hauler that I've seen before. It is a frickin' Franken camper and it works like a fox. I like this thing. This is a wild little critter right here, man. Couple that together with a very rare quality in the world of travel trailers, a full true two inch sidewall, um, a, a vaulted ceiling to give you some extra headroom like in the shower where you really need it. And this comes out with just a weird arrangement that works for me. It's 5,800 pounds dry weight. It has a serious cargo capacity of like 2,700 additional pounds. You can actually pack this sucker full of cargo. How many big fifth wheels, how many big trailers have you seen out there? They have like jack squat, like an 1,100 pound cargo capacity. Forget that, like 2,700 pounds of crap in this thing. Not to mention the, the little dining desk arrangement. Um, you don't have to have a polo white Dinofa chair or something stupid like that. You just have a desk. You can, oh my gosh, you can work camp out of this thing. This rocks. And if this isn't copied, it's going to be. And I am really excited to see what people think about this one. Um, is this a floor plan that you think more manufacturers should kind of jump on the bandwagon for? Personally, my answer, I think yes. But that's my two cents. And a lot of my excitement on this is certainly shaped by the fact that I see the same floor plans by the same manufacturers all the time. Because RV R&D stands for rip off and duplicate. And there is very little in the way of even minor originality like this that we're looking at here today. And if you look at this, it's like they just took bits and pieces of all kinds of different RVs and mashed them together. Like they, they expanded on a compact couples model with a private bedroom. So we have this Swiss Army super sofa over here that we're going to look at in a little bit more depth in a second. Um, on the back, we have a gigantic bathroom. That bathroom is huge. Although I'm going to go out of my way and just point this out real quick. Personally, I know it looks cute. I think the double sink is kind of silly because I don't think anybody can really stand at the rear sink because of the toilet's position. I wish it was just open counter space with one bigger sink instead of two small sinks. So let that kind of serve as an example right there that although I love this floor plan, I've yet to find an RV that, that I think is necessarily perfect. You know, if you can think of the one floor plan that works for everybody, folks, we will pay you cash money. Trust me. We'll pay you money every time we sell one. <laughs> but look at this. Um, so often, like in the compact couples camper version of this floor plan, you have crap for countertop space. So you have this elevated bar right here, which I know some people aren't usually all hot to trap for uh, level changes on their kitchen countertops. I do understand how it can affect your functional prep space. But if it was all one level next to that stove, you kind of run the risk of like something sloshing out and spilling over onto whoever's at the dinette. So the fact that it does have a couple inch lift right there, personally, I think really serves as a, uh, a, a good kind of, you know, break point right there as opposed to a point break, which was uh, a movie with Keanu Reeves in which he had like a two and a half minute skydiving fight simulator kind of uh, scene. They really served as, I think, the precursor to the Matrix movies, if you ask me. Wait, sorry, Keanu Reeves, what was I talking about? I'm sorry, uh, the camper, let's take a look at this. Over here, like you've seen where some manufacturers will put like a, a theater seat or a hide-a-bed and then a refrigerator in a slide with a private front bedroom, right? Well, again, they went with an extra long, full, like, chaise lounge, as you uh, they, they they like you to call it right there. But the big L lounger, it's like the size of a U-Dinette. It's bigger than just a conventional sofa. And then they added that full big pantry and the refrigerator into the slide. So this might be a full true super slide. I haven't hard measured it. There's really no true definition of a true super slide, by the way. But uh, it's, it's the size of, like, a sofa and dinette slide. But they 
with that elevated kitchen countertop, they did something that is really hard to do in small campers. They created a clear division between the kitchen and the living room. And I think, personally, that is a very cool, very exciting thing. Now, the sidewall of this is laminated, and most RV manufacturers, they don't put outlets in a laminated wall. But because the interior walls are not laminated, because they're hollow, they had the opportunity to put power outlets in this kitchen in areas that make sense. And uh, personally, I really like what they did there. Now, I meant to open this up so that you could see. Uh, that is a, oh, let me get the camera pointed at it. Stainless farm sink right there. And then I'm dropping everything. Uh, that was, you know, not my smoothest work, but hey, neither here nor there. I also do like the fact they put a couple lights over that area so you can actually see what you're doing if you're doing some prep work at night. But look at the overhead cabinet storage. Um, this actually passes through over there. So you really have maximized uh, compartment space, but you can reach all of it, which is uh, a thing that uh, not every brand's going to do. Now, if I, if I cop a squat over here on the Swiss Army Super Sofa, above that window, that is going to be our entertainment space. Now, it's certainly up high where you're looking up high, which is that residential trend that doesn't always work well for RVs. But if somebody's sitting at the do-it-all desk, bench, table, Franken seating situation. Well, they're going to be up out of the way. Now, you notice I moved those chairs over onto the bench to just kind of get them out of the way to show you how you can use this space however you want. If you don't care about the free floating chairs, don't bring them with you. Because look at that. You have a built in desk, basically. There is, I, and I love this. I love this. But there's one thing I wish they would do. You see how there's a pedestal leg right here. I get that. That's there for stability and support. If you got to push down on it to get up, you can do that here. I really wish this side would bracket into place so that it could be um, removed. I personally think that would enhance the function of this even more. And if you really wanted to, man, you could truly just blow this space wide open. Now, a couple more things over here. Uh, I was at a funny angle. I forgot. I got all whew, excited. I forgot to open up uh, the rest of the kitchen drawers because this thing has four drawers with more of those handy outlets. And a better look, I think, here at that level change next to the stove. It's not a full-on side splash. Sure. Is it possible if you're really frying up some bacon, baby, could you, you know, splish splash the person over here? It's not impossible for bacon to hop, pop, and jump over there. It's, you know, it's less likely, I, I think. Um... There's a reason I call this a Swiss Army Super Sofa. It only does uh, a little bit of ever stuff, basically. Like, you can sit on it. A long person can lay on it. You can lounge on it. It does have storage down below, but it occurs to me. I still missed yet another chunk of storage over here under the Judy Dench <laughs> dinette bench, as it were. The, uh, the, the, the Dable. I don't know. We had some good names for this. I was recording, I think, a Grand Design Reflection one time, and I said, what do we call this thing? And people came up with all these awesome names for it. And then, frankly, um, I forgot them. And I, I guess we need to come up with new nerdism names for that thing right there, the Franken table. But another cool thing on the Swiss Army Super Sofa over here is not only is it longer so a grown adult could lounge on it on a rainy day, that also does open up into a height of it, albeit a little bit more narrow one, um, the other thing that I want to uh, point out here is when the hide-a-bed is deployed, you're probably going to want to get those chairs out of the way, maybe tucked over on the bench like I showed them the first time, um, just due to the fact that it's going to make it really hard to sneak through here to get to the bathroom at night. But if those chairs are out of the way, but if you get that out of the way, then you can sneak through here. Now, if you have a longer guest, tall person like me, uh, with their feet hanging off the edge of the bed where Ted the Bed Goblin can munch on them piggy toes. Well, uh, you might still have to do the hop on pop step over uh, to, to uh, get there. Now, there is this is a, uh, a sliding privacy door here to close off this entire space. And I want to point out the little details like the fact that they really fully privatize this with that extra vertical strip right there. So there's no peekeration going around that corner there. Now, um... This RV's greatest assets are also its greatest liability. I really like all of that big, deep overhead cabinet storage. Like, that is some serious big cabinet space. The downside is it sticks out so far 
that if you're tall like me and you try to sit straight up in bed, you will bonk your head on that. I have tested that before. I don't feel like testing that out again today. I smashed my shins on a hitch ball earlier today. Ooh, I was swearing. I was swearing. Anyway. <laughs> now look at this. When I picked up the power cord on this thing, I went, holy crap, why is it so heavy? And I realized it was 50 amp. And I went, why is it 50 amp? Because this is built with one of the only options available on this floor plan, the optional second air conditioner that we're looking at today. Now, up front here, a 72 by 80 king bed is the standard bed arrangement. Now, that means that they do go with a narrow hanging wardrobe tower on either side of the bed. They open it up, though, and they use a radius corner so you don't feel like you're, you know, you're not going to get claustrophobic sleeping in that thing. And if you're all over at night, you don't have a sharp point jabbing you. Household USB plugs on both sides of the bed. And this, I think, is really smart. Do you see how far past the bed base the mattress sticks out? If you want to, then all you have to do is trim down the extra plywood that hangs over and the storage chest and shoe garage down below. Well, that is queen size. So if you want more room to walk around the bed, you can. Now, I want to I wanna clarify something I just said. I don't know that I consider this a walk around bed because you have these huge cabinet like bases that come all the way out here this is becoming very common and walk around beds you can't walk around them quite like you used to because this has a monsters uh monstrously sized outside storage but that means it's stuck into the rv a little bit it's a give and a take i want to give you that information so you know what you're getting for your money you might have noticed they don't put a bedspread on this because most people throw the bedspread away so they don't spend money on a bedspread that you're just going to throw away meaning you don't spend money on a bedspread you're just going to throw away but you remember that cool angled kitchen? That creates a really cool opportunity over here. Because remember how I said this had thinner hanging wardrobe towers? Well, they you don't lose that storage in this floor plan. In some of them you do. In some of the North Trails you do. In this one you don't. Instead, you're gaining this little, you know, eight ball in the corner pocket storage space over here. The one thing I want to make you aware of on this is for that right hand door to open you do need to slightly slide that uh big old barn door there you notice how it's it is partially closed right now which at the same time if you're going to get in here and get in the closet and change clothes you're probably going to close that anyway now one little mod i think i would do as an owner i would put like a little hook latch right there and i'd let it hook into something over here so i could basically keep that bedroom door shut if i really wanted it to you know what i mean oh i like how that opens for airflow i wasn't expecting that that's a nice touch that's a real nice touch okay now uh moving forward the walls are six and a half foot tall but it does have a laminated vaulted ceiling now it's a laminated ceiling but it is a five eighths tongue and groove plywood floor so um the history of laminated flooring in the rv industry is a little bit suspect there, you can build a laminated floor crazy heavy duty. A lot of motorhomes have laminated floors because they're quieter, which is nice when you're driving down the road. They don't squeak and creak. But uh, a lot of towable laminated flooring in the history of the industry has been built a little bit light duty, and you end up with soft, squishy trampoline floor spots. You don't have to worry about that here. Now, uh, again, those, those chairs being free-floating, you can move them anywhere you want. You can create a timeout seat by that entry door right there. Or what you can do is you can move one of these over here and you can hold hands with their partner and you can give them the encouragement they need as they're giving birth. It's okay, Daryl. You can do it. I can't. I can't do it. I need the epidural. He's crowning. We're going to have to go in surgically if we can't get this done. All right. Hold on. <laughs> Muzzle tov. It's a boy. All right. Uh, this counter space is redonkulous. Look at that. I'm not using, uh, hold on. I ain't using tricky wide angle fisheye lens. This is just how flipping big this thing is. It rocks because it's over the top of the camp kitchen. Now, that left them room for Lipitorage Galorge storage over here with an extra, extra deep double vanity. Now, that being said, uh, by the way, through that window, the neighbors will probably give applause uh, when that baby enters this, this 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 plane of existence. But why two sinks? I talked about this earlier. Why two sinks? I know it looks neat. Personally, I I just I would rather just have the counter space and a bigger or something. I don't know. Is that just me though? 
Um, by the way, if you're looking for things like a porcelain to, uh, toilet, that's an easy upgrade. Oh, by the way, you got to see my my awful acting skills. Here's the space you have around the toilet. Um, you know, it, it's actually very, very spacious, very effective in here. And with the vaulted ceiling, it's vaulted just enough that at my height, my hat is just inside that skylight. I'm, uh, with my hat, I'm about 6'2", a uh, little less than 6'3", since I'm not wearing boots today. In case you're wondering, yes, I wear some very thick-soled boots here. In the wintertime, it gives you that insulator between the ground, uh, and, uh, you know, your feet so you don't end up with like freezing feet or anything like that. Great storage here in the bathroom. I like it, I'm impressed. You have good storage, front, back, inside, and out. Wait, hmm, hold on. Are we gonna get to that bedroom when the slide's closed? Let's find out. Okay, I need a ruling on this one because I think, I think it can qualify but there's a butt involved here. Let me get there. Okay. So to give you the frame of reference, you know, there's our entry door. We're walking out of the bathroom. By the way, the reason I popped this up right here, if you don't like the, the brighter skin on this, this is intended to be reversible. So if you want everything to be dark, you can do that. Although the RV overall, I think reads lighter, but on like a very neutral side of that. Now, remember this table doesn't remove. This is another reason why I, and I didn't realize this before. This is another reason why I think a removable table would be beneficial here because what you have to do is do a long leg, uh, Paul Bunyan step over that thing. But as soon as you do, you can get back here. You can get to all of the kitchen, the refrigerator, and you don't have to be no skinny mini to do the, uh, travel trailer slide and glide your way right back here into the bedroom. I'm not saying it's the most obvious travel stop friendly camper. My two cents, personally, my vote is that this is Cracker Barrel capable or overnight stay capable. The only real hiccup is just that you do have to step between the table and the lounge right there. Do you think this qualifies? You let me know. Now, I'll tell you what I like here. Um, you know, I've been very vocal about the fact that there's some things on North Trails that I love. There's also some things on North Trails that I think they could do better. And I'll, I'll point one of those out. This has really no allowance for a factory solar package. I personally think that that should really change. Now, up here on the tongue of the trailer, they have the little prep plug for the portable panel, um, which, you know, isn't nothing, certainly. Uh, but I would like at least the ability to option even a small, say, 100-watt factory solar package on this. So let me ask you this. Do you think this should have some kind of roof solar prep and or solar option. And if so, what do you think is like a base reasonable solar package and then maybe an optional upgrade package? And the reason I ask is because I know for a fact, North Trail is watching these videos for your feedback and they've already made some changes to this product from when I first started recording North Trails. Uh, earlier this year, they are actively listening and they are really you know, tuned in and dialed into making this the best product that you know they can. Um, so your, your feedback really does have an impact here. I love that little light blue accent though. It just gives it that light, airy, bright, kind of comfy camping feeling, but it's still very sharp, very modern looking. Um, we've got a battery disconnect switch up here on the tongue, by the way, it just uh, a very common feature, but a lot of times you look for those in pass-through compartments and you might not see one. And as they call it, the King Kong storage, which seems like kind of a, uh, a goof stupid name until you look in this thing and you sort of go all right yeah i'll buy that king kong storage but just a, you know looking at this i don't know that you can really grasp how big this is so let me do something goofy and climb in there and when you see a midwestern dad bod cheese curd eating dork dude over here stuffed in this thing and you realize you could probably put a couple more of me up here and depending on if i could get my my leg behind my head you might be able to shove another one of me up here I don't know if King Kong storage is the wrong name for it. Now, how am I getting out of here? Mm, this, is, this is gonna hurt. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Ow, something tore. I'm okay. Uh, okay, I'll be all right. I'll walk that off. Uh, one of the other things that's in there, by the way, is uh, a prep plug for a TPMS system. So if you wanna add one of those to this, very easy to do. 
Um, magnet holdbacks, slam latches. Although if you're getting to a campsite at night, little courtesy to you don't have to slam it. You don't have to just drop the thing, kaplonk it. You know, it's it's okay. You don't have to do that. Did you notice in there, by the way, how nicely finished off that was? That's because it has that laminated under bed deck, which is acting as a thermal barrier from the inside to the outside of the RV, which is cool. Now, everything on this, whether it's the, the power tongue jack, the stabilizers, the, uh, the awning, everything is just push button easy. We have an enclosed forced air heated belly. And if you are, you know, looking at the TPMS thing, something else you might really appreciate, because this is a little bit longer than those compact living room models that I discussed previously. The wide stance stability axles are really going to help this track and ride much, much nicer going down the road. Now, this is something I recently learned that I, I'm really starting to appreciate, is this is a cassette style furnace. When you see this like framework around the furnace exhaust, what that means is if you ever need service, that furnace could be removed right here. Nobody has to go into your RV and disassemble half your dinette or your kitchen to get to it. I like that. The more that I see that, the happier I am with that. Uh, the wide stance, uh, nope, sorry. The, uh, not wide stance axles, yeah. The Moride stable steps right here, overlooking that anti-slam entry door is a nice thing. It, you know, I'm, there's something that I'm, I, I'm going to offer as a bit of a knock on this floor plan that I could live with, but I would prefer. I would like it if somehow they figured out a way to put that rear awning arm not right next to the door, but fully encompass that camp kitchen. I'm looking at the space allowance there, and it, and that outside camp kitchen occupies the space under that big double sink in the bathroom. So it might not be possible. It really would have been cool if they nailed that. But at the same time, that is not a crap camp kitchen. That is a nice pull-out griddle station there. You got Dad's medicine cabinet on the left for the barley water uh, the and the, uh, you know, soda pop as it were or just conventional water whatever i don't know stay hydrated um but you know the extra outlets that are out here that galvanized rolled steel countertop space and if you don't like i don't care about that i don't care about that remove them there's nothing says that that has to be there that could be wide open storage if you wanted it to be wide open storage and again you might have noticed i'm showing the good with the bad so it's cool that this has that laminated, vaulted, easy, comfortable walk on roof. It's a bummer that there's absolutely no factory allowance for a ladder on these, not from the factory or aftermarket. The walls just are not braced for it, unfortunately. But I know that's a big sticking point for a lot of folks. I wanna make sure I point that out so you know what you're getting for your money. I like what they did on the back here. A lot of people say, why do they put the water hookups above the electrical hookups? They, North Trail, did not electrical on the left slide to the right we got our water hookups with a full outside utility shower over here by the way so you can kind of rinse the turtle slime off your feet a little bit or just you know put out the neighbor's campfire when it's smoking up your site that's a joke you know, i don't recommend doing stuff like that <laughs> um little detail stuff too um the the slide wiper seals on this they put these extra little trim pieces to catch that wiper seal to make sure that it fully slides in or out or flips in or out as it were so that you don't accidentally have water bleeding through there. Now, one thing I'm curious about, if I get down here, I see that we have a bathroom black and gray outlet, but if my eyes are not mistaken, as I suspected, this has two sewer outlets. You've got the black and the gray in the back and then up front here for just the kitchen, you have another gray outlet. That, by the way, is why this thing reads as having such a huge gray tank total capacity, because you actually have a bathroom gray for the uh, sink and the shower, and then you have a dedicated kitchen gray, so you're getting double the tank capacity. Now, you know, walking between these two north trails, I feel kind of like Luke Skywalker flying in that little ditch to blow up the Death Star or whatever, but I'm a nerd like that. If you like what you see, folks, Give the team in here or uh, a call or check the link in the video description. Um, we might have this parked at more than one uh, location, more than one Bish's location carries door trails. And uh, we might have these parked a little bit closer to your front door if you're somewhere across the country. You can always use that link to check for pricing and availability. And uh, remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We just put it all right out there to make you know buying easy. But let me know what you think about this thing. Like I said, I think I get super excited just because I see the same things all day, every day. And they're fun, sure, they're fun. That's why they keep making them. 
But when they come up with something different and when it works like this, that's what gets my goat, man. That's what gets me going. So if you like it, let me know. And if you think it sucks, let me know that too. Like I could see somebody have an issue with the traveling access for sure. But I hope you appreciate that I take the time to show that stuff. It's a showing that might mean you don't buy this, but I've got other stuff for you. We have other stuff for you here. So I can make sure you're getting your second camper the first time. So when you're ready, we're ready. And we're willing to do what it takes to make sure you can buy with confidence. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping everyone. Bye.